Hey everybody and welcome to another RCT2 hacking tutorial. It's been quite a while since we've last visited this park with all of our hacked rides, but it's about time we get back to it. So today we're going to look at our fifth roller coaster here in our little park. And this is one that's gotten requested quite a bit uh, from a number of folks. Uh, so it's about time that we get it done. It just took me a little while to actually feed the thing and do supports and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so this is our sample Intamin coaster here. Um, I'm calling it Live Wire. Uh, certainly open to better name suggestions if you have any of them. But uh, we're going to look at a couple of different hacks on this today. So first things first, we're going to look at a uh, forwards, backwards, and forwards launch while still using block brakes. Uh, and then also we're going to look at diagonal brakes, uh, which can be applied to really any braking on, say, any element really. So here we see our train going through our launch, and we're going to see it stall out right here. Push the camera up a little bit so we can see it go back over top of our little airtime hill, up our spike, and now down forward, and up and over the hill. Now if we turn the corner here, we're going to let our ride go through its whole layout, which is sort of reminiscent of uh, some of the newer Intamins like Pantheon. big swooping elements, couple inversions, things like that. But here we go, as we come close to the ending of the ride, we're going to see, as you come up to the brake run here, the ride is going to slow down on the diagonal. So it's actually a relatively straightforward approach to doing this, but the actual hack itself can be kind of tedious. So I would suggest if um, you're kind of new to hacking, watch some of the other videos in, the, uh, in my series first in the playlist and kind of familiar, familiarize yourself with how to do some of the various tools and tips and tricks. Um, and then with this one, it's just a matter of really trying to get our timing right for everything. And actually, if we go down here and look underground, get rid of those pathways, that yellow wild mouse track, that's what we're actually going to be building here today. Um, so it's another shoestring ride. Uh, it's a little bit different from some of the other ones that we've done, but uh, it's not, not super different. Uh, once you learn the concept, it's pretty easy to apply this to a bunch of different mm -hmm. options. So anyway, let's uh, jump on into it and uh, we'll go step by step on how to do it. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed all of the peeps, the scenery and the pathways to give a little more cleanliness to our space here and let us kind of build in peace. Um, what I've done here is marked up the various elements here with a couple of different pieces. Uh, in the past, I have gone through and actually built the entire ride from the ground up. Uh, we're not going to do that here because this hack really is not specific to a certain type of layout or whatever that may be. It's really more so based on uh, just the general concept of how you do it. So if you want to copy this exactly, then by all means go right ahead. But uh, this is really based on kind of giving you the information that you need and not really doing anything beyond that. So this takes the form of a couple of different things. So you'll see the red track here is our main coaster. So that's the gay coaster track. Um, the blue track we're going to call dummy track uh, because it's just filling in from a visual purpose. And the yellow track back here is our backwards spike. So part one of this hacking tutorial is how to do the forwards, backwards, forwards launch. So this is a pretty big trend now in coasters. And essentially our coaster wants to go up the uh, top hat here. We wanted to roll back up a spike and then we wanted to go forward again, this time with enough momentum to get up and over that top hat and go beyond. Uh, so before we get into that, though, uh, the blue track here, the dummy track, uh, this is a pretty standard thing, and I would expect that if you're relatively familiar, familiar with this, that um, or hacking in general, that you're going to know how to do this. But just in case, uh, let's grab a Giga Coaster here, which, like we all know, this can't do inversions. So you know, if we put a couple um, lift hill here, and we put a drop. Let's turn off our lift hill here. Which, by the way, um, let's go ahead for this hack and go to the Cheats menu uh, in OpenRCT and let's check all the boxes except for building at invalid heights, um, just so we have them all open and ready. Okay, so let's drop this down. Let's say I wanted to put a, a barrel roll right here. So what I'm going to do, since obviously we can't put it here because we have no element for that, uh, I'm going to go here and take the coaster and switch it over to Twister Roller Coaster, which we know has the barrel roll. It does right here, so we're going to go barrel roll left. All right, or another left, and then uh, we can actually go ahead and finish this. And then we can turn this right back to Yay Coaster. Um, so let's go back and change it. Now you'll notice the track doesn't show up there. 
but it is still there. So let's take a uh, ride that can indeed do this. So we're going to grab the uh, Intamin Blitzstream, which I believe is what I'm using for Livewire Hack. So let's just grab a little train here and test this out so you can kind of see what we're doing. Um, the reason I changed the train is because the Giga Coaster train cannot do those kind of inversions. It doesn't have the sprites for it. So it just wouldn't show up properly. But you'll see here that even though there's a giant gap in the track right here, it's still going to drop down and it's going to go through that left hand barrel roll. Nice and easy. And go around. So it's still there, but we need to put something there visually that makes it look correct. So we're going to grab our um, B&M track here and we're going to build backwards over top of this. Now zero clearances is on. Disable, zero, disable clearance checks. Make sure that's checked. And then we're going to leave it like that. So now when the ride goes over top oh we see we did it the wrong way so let's grab the barrel roll to the left and this i pay close attention to which way it rolls so that it looks correct here we go through the roll and done so now it looks correct we have the, the track that we want for the majority of the ride, but then where it doesn't show up properly, we were able to throw in this other one. Now, we always build it backwards, so it doesn't automatically merge with the track. If you build it forward, it's not going to work, and it's going to cause you all sorts of headaches. So anyway, let's get rid of that. So that's what I've done here in all of these instances. So this track, if you take out the blue, uh, is still continuous, even though it would be invisible. Now, the blue on this spike here is actually part of this yellow track, so it is a different different coaster uh, but anyway let's click on our, our live wire thing we're going to jump down to one train with six cars per train because we're actually going to take one of those uh, here and it's going to help us with the diagonal brakes but what we want to do is make sure that this is going to run with blocks right now so as you can see i have built our whole layout and where it would be for our backwards merge just goes continuous now the tra the game doesn't care whether the train can make it around or not right now so we go up to two, we can see that this does indeed put proper block brakes set up and everything. So we have the train set up behind the station here in the block brakes. And here this one goes off to its thing. And it'll start into here. We'll have this little launch for the land or the first launch. And then it rolls back. And because we have nothing here, it's just going to roll back through the rest of the layout as it would typically. So that of course is not what we want but at the same time this proves so far that we have a properly block sectioned ride so what we need to do now is merge this together and what we're going to do is actually do a forward and a backwards merge so we're going to do a two directional merge so i've got these launch pieces in here and this is all just built from you know, some of this trial and error here so what i'm going to do is build one straight piece just like this and I'm going to select the tile inspector and select that piece, make sure that I get the right one, which is Giga Coaster 1 for this yellow track. And I'm going to lower this by a couple of pieces. All right, so we're going to go and build a couple of these right up this way. We need two overlapping pieces. So that's going to be our slope here and this flat. So just for visualization purposes, this curve takes up all five of these tiles. And if we build straight pieces through here, even though it looks like they're overlapping, none of that has merged itself together because they're not the same piece on the same tile. These here will be the same piece on the same tile. So what we want to do is take our tile inspector and bring this guy up. We're going to take our tile inspector here and we're going to bring this guy up. Okay, so right now it's not going to do anything. If we go to test this, it's actually going to freeze while we do the whole thing, and then it's going to spawn a car right there. That's not what we want to do. What we need to do here first is go into our tile inspector, this very last one, so the furthest one down, and we're going to take our um, live wire track and the Giga Coaster 1 track here, the reverse spike, and we're going to just swap the order of those. So this one sits on top, you'll notice that the red shines through first, um, and now when we test this, you can see that the ride operates or opens with the proper block sections. What we're basically doing is tricking the game into seeing that this is still a continuous circuit coaster, but now we have the ability for this to go backwards onto another strip and then forwards back onto this. 
Now the train in the station is just going to wait there until the next block is triggered, so it's no no real issue there as far as that goes. So we're just going to kind of let it sit there for a minute while this goes up the back spike and then forward and up here. Now what you're going to notice here is that this does not go up and over, um, and this is something that I found a little bit through trial and error. Um, we it will actually go up and over when we do our shoestring hack for the diagonal brakes. Uh, if you want to see it just operate in general, then I would suggest playing around with the launch speeds and everything uh, just to make sure that it does what you want it to do. Um, and then you're going to have to just readjust that once you do the um, underground uh, shoestring for the diagonal brakes. So now let's look at the diagonal brakes now that we have our launch track settled and the inversions and everything else settled. We have a diagonal section here. This is where we want the ride to break initially, and then we're going to come around, and then we have our straight section behind the station. So this is where the block brake is that will hold the second train behind the first train after the station. Now, in general, you would like a block brake kind of on this diagonal here as it comes through just to clear out so then the next train can go. We're going to actually fudge that a little bit. Now, you can do, you know, kind of your own bit here we could stick a straight section here and put a block brick if we wanted to but uh, I'm just going to put a little piece of chain lift here um, now the uh, other diagonal launch here kind of this first little mini launch that I have does mean that our lift hill speed is a little higher we're at 40 miles per hour but we're going to put a break underground as well that's going to kind of negate that um, so really you're not going to see train speed really do a whole lot different here uh, but once you get past that cresting of this chain lift that will count as a block break and clear the other train to dispatch as this one comes into the brakes. So uh, it just keeps our operations running smoothly and, and does well. Okay, so what do we have to do for diagonal brakes? Or like I said, this is any brakes in any element for whatever you want to do. You could put the brakes on the corkscrew if you wanted to. It really doesn't make a difference. Um, but in this instance, you know, you're most commonly going to find diagonal brakes or inclined brakes. Um, so those are what we're going to look for. The theory behind this is relatively simple. Basically, what we're going to do is take one of the trains that, or one of the train vehicles that's in the middle of the train, and we're going to move that one down below, and that's going to be our dummy track. Now, for all the shoestrings that we've done here previously, we've taken the control train and moved that to the bottom. So the very first car, which is our control car uh, on the train, goes down below, and that's the one that runs around and actually controls the ride. This one, our control still stays up above, so the, the visible track that you see here is our control through the whole thing, but we're going to move a secondary car, so one of the middle ones, down below, and that's going to basically just operate on a layout that's essentially the same length as this, just underground, and when we get to the section where the diagonal visible portion is, down below it's going to be a straight section that we can add a brake to, and we'll essentially break the entire train. If something happens to one car, even if it's not connected to the rest of the train, it will affect the rest of the train. So that's the way that we're uh, going to go about this. Um, now it's got to be a middle car because the front car is the control, so that uh, considers your station. And the back car also has consideration for uh, block brakes and things like that. So what we're going to do is build a wild mouse uh, because this is a pretty hefty sized uh, track here. I mean, it's a pretty long ride uh, itself. So we want to just be able to go through and, um, and and do some kind of similar things here. So what I'm going to do is actually leave a uh, straight section here so we can merge this together. Um, and you'll notice the block break is here, one behind the station. Um, this is just to facilitate this merge. But basically what I want to do is come up here to 20. And by doing that, you'll see it's already merged. So now we have our uh, wild mouse track, um, which is right here behind the station. If I were to go in here and were to swap these, you'll see that wild mouse track. If I change it to another color, see it even better. So you can see that white track there showing through um, like it should. Okay. So now we're going to come off of this, and we're basically going to build underground. And then we're going to, do, let's call it just two right back here. Now we can see all the other underground stuff we've been working with. So it's going to get a little messy as we continue to do uh, hacks in this park. But that's just part of it, unfortunately. Okay. So now we're down at negative 25. So it just needs to be under the ground. It doesn't necessarily need to be at any one particular height. Um, okay. So now we're going to go 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this eighth one right here, um, I'm actually going to grab this ride dialog window. And I'm going to change the color of that to red. Actually, not the whole thing. The elephant skin. So what you can see on this one is this ride is, or this section of track is essentially right underneath of our station, right kind of around the back uh, of the uh, station, which is where the vehicle is that we're going to move uh, away from. So we're going to take that second to last vehicle. So we had said earlier this is a six car train. So we're going to take vehicle number five, and we're going to move him down here, and then move him back forward, and he's going to sit there basically underneath. It's just going to mean that when the guests get onto the ride, they won't teleport somewhere else because that car is sitting somewhere else. So let's fill this back in real quick. So let's uh, this. Let's right click here. There we go. Ground view again and merge that back. Right. So that is where the ride sits. So you can see at um, our start here, we have the uh, above ground. And then we have our underground kind of back and forward section here. So if we were to go ahead, we're going to use one train on this initially, just because it's going to be a lot easier for us to test this. So let's pause right here so you can see we have our train spawned. Now, one of the things you will need for this uh, is the Edit Ride Vehicles plugin, which I will provide a link to uh, in the description uh, in the video here. If you are downloading this plugin, you need to put it in your plugins folder within your OpenRCT2 folder. Um, this is required in order to do this work. Okay, so what we need to do is select our ride. So we're going to select a live wire here. All right, you can see we have vehicle one. Two, three, four, five, and six. So we're going to select number five here, and we're going to select um, ten uh, or times ten, which just means we can move this on the track faster. And on the track progress button here, we're going to basically move this backwards, and you can see it just goes backwards down the track. So we can't necessarily have that because we want it to go down onto our track below. So we're going to take our tile inspector here on this one just behind, and we're going to swap that track. Put it going down the drop. So now we can see it's going to go all the way down. We're going to stop it here before it goes off the edge. And then we're going to go ahead and push this forward. And it's going to sit essentially right there. Now we don't need to do this yet necessarily. This is just more of a show you how, you do, how to do it. But regardless, we'll go ahead and put it in there. Now uh, we selected vehicle six here and we're going to use this track and kind of push it a little bit forward. Go down to one and then, uh, oops, forward just a little bit more. So now you can see, if you look above, none the wiser, you wouldn't necessarily know there was a sixth car. There's just five cars here as you would have it. But number five is down here. Okay, so now what we need to do is make a track down below that is the length of the track above. Now, how do you know how long that is? Um, truth be told, you don't. Um, you can certainly go through and add up piece lengths. There are piece tables out there as far as how long each individual piece is. But uh, in general, uh, as much as I hate to say it, this is a trial and error process. This is where this becomes incredibly tedious. So you will generally be doing this test a number of times. You'll be backing that card down a number of times. You're going to have to reset it every single time. Um, so this is why if you haven't done a lot of hacking, this is not the one to start with because it can be just tedious and annoying and take a long time. But now I've already done this one, so I know exactly how many pieces I need. So we're going to go ahead and build it and you'll see some of the tricks that I use to get it to the right speed or the right length in general and how we measured that. So this uh, red track that we have marked down here is a key to that element. Okay, so what we're going to do is build uh, 22 forward. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. We're going to wrap around. And we're going to go back 22, and we're going to go 23, 24, 25. Okay, so now what we're going to do is basically build uh, five of these. Lines up real nice. So there was our a second up and back. 
our third up and back. Our fourth up and back. Finally, we're going to do our fifth one. And when you get it close to the end, uh, when you've done this um, underground track and you're trying to make it the exact same length as what's up here, you're going to end up with things that are very close but not quite there. So some of the tricks that you can use is instead of a straight section, you can have a little hill. So we're going to put a little tiny hill right here, another little tiny hill right here. I found that I needed two of those. Actually, let's do that. Then trying to add in little kind of bits and pieces here. Couple turns. Okay. Do another little hill. Now I know full well because I've done this before and already pre-tested that this is where my first breaks go. And that break there is actually the one that is going to counter this uh, piece of lift track here that is acting as a mini launch. So it lets us do our block without making it super obvious that we're doing the block. <clears throat> okay, so we will turn the corner here, and now using that same change the track uh, that we've worked with before, we're going to swap the track here to mini golf. And mini golf is the real MVP for all of these uh, shoestring type rides because. Uh, the golf holes count as a track length, and it is a very, very, very small track length as compared to pretty much everything else. So really what you have to do is get your ride to almost exact, but not quite there, and then you just start inserting miniature golf holes into your uh, shoestring track below. And that dummy track that you do is the, you're going to get closer and closer and closer, and like I said, it's going to be tedious, but the mini golf holes are going to help get it to exactly the right point that you need. All right, so we added one miniature golf hole, and now we're back to the regular track. And now we get into our actual breaks. So we're going to drop a couple of different breaks here. So 36, 31, 18, 13, and 9. Okay, and this should be 14. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And right into the curve. Okay, so you can see uh, with this curve now we have now completed a circuit below. Uh, so this white track is now continuous. So what we're going to do, since we've already gone ahead and moved our train down here, we're going to zoom in real good with our super zoom. And I'm going to pull up that edit ride vehicles um, again. And I'm going to look at uh, vehicle number five. We're going to move that track progress ever so slightly so we can see a reference point. So what we're going to look at here is this little wheelbase right here. And you can see this um, kind of right hand running wheel leaves us about a pixel worth of red here visible. And what we're going to do is cycle this ride one time, and then we're going to see if that's where it lands when we bring it back down. Or when we close it again, once it arrives at the station, we want it to see if it's the same length. And that's what's really going to determine whether your uh, piece down here is correct. And generally what I would suggest when you do this is you want to run your thing like 20, 30 times. You can speed up your, your timeline uh, with the, you know, the fixed speed, turbo speed, whatever that may be, and just run it a bunch of times and see if it gets off. You can use a colored piece of track here, which is what I'm doing. You can put a piece of scenery there um, as like a, a marker, but basically you're trying to get as close as you possibly can to the same spot every time. Because with a lot of these hacks, if it gets off by a little bit, it's going to slowly compound and compound and compound and compound until it breaks. So we've had a couple like that. So our Star Flyer is just like that. The uh, Mauer X car is like that. So after a while, now granted that may be hours and hours and hours, but it will eventually break. So if it's something that you intend to keep running for a long time, like while you're building on a scenario, uh, then you want to watch out for some of those kind of things. If it's something that you're doing just for like a release park where no one's going to look at it for more than, you know, at best maybe half an hour, uh, then it's less of an issue. But either way, you know, you have to build it kind of what you're looking for. So anyway, we've moved this right back to that last little section there. Let's uh, unpause. 
And we'll leave that going and see how this looks. Now one of the things you'll see that since this bottom car is not contributing to the slowdown as we go up the top hat, you'll see that our ride is now able to actually make it up and over, so it's going to perform a little bit differently. You'll notice down below it does the same thing that the track above is doing. All the cars will always go the same speed, even if they're not connected. Now we're going to get that big push. We're going to go up and nearly over, but not quite. So sometimes it might be a little bit different, just depends on what's going on. See if it makes it this time. If not, we can easily adjust that. There we go. It kind of depends what's going on sometimes if uh, the ride may be slightly different. Goes along. Well, let's close this so that we can make sure that it parks in the right spot. Now, if I didn't already know where to put the brakes on the ride, I would be watching this real closely with my mouse here set up over top of the um, uh, over top of the pause button, so that I can see when the ride is getting to wherever it's supposed to be getting to. So we can see we're approaching the brake run here. We got our guy down here. We want this train to be fully up on the brake run before it starts to slow down. And you can see, let's uh, just mark these for reference. Our brake pieces are here and here. You can see it slows down just a little bit right there. We could even push that forward a little bit if we wanted to, but we don't necessarily have to. All right, so now it's going to slowly park itself. Oh, and then we have that issue, which is not unsurprising. So what we had happen there is we never switched this back from where we started. So it was still pointing down towards the loud mouse track. So try that again, test and close. And now we're going to go through here one more time, swap this track to get the wild mouse. We're going to go ahead and take our edit ride vehicles. And then we're going to go times 10. And then we're going to back this bad boy up down here. I like leaving in those mistakes in these recordings just because it helps kind of reinforce that it is you know, easy and very possible to make all sorts of little mistakes like that. But you kind of know what you're looking for after a little while, so it's just something that's relatively simple to catch. All right, so let's get our vehicle looking okay there. All right, so now we're going to not make that same mistake by going back to this tile inspector and switching back the wild mouse on top. So this looks continuous with the intimate track. Uh, we can see here that there's, I'll call it two pixels worth. Let's uh, move that back just a little bit. So, all right, so there we go. One, we'll call it like one pixel worth of red. Now the nice thing is that the track length is going to stay consistent. So no matter what speed you take it, well, that's different. How well, that happened? Huh. No. Okay. I don't know how that was missing, but all right, let's uh, try again. All right. Get on ride vehicles. And like I said, you're going to get really good at doing this because you're going to have to do it a whole heck of a lot to get the timing just right. Okay. Drop this guy in here. We'll go ahead and move him back one. And then let's get number six and track progress. Let's bring him right up to the edge. Okay. So now, assuming there are no further gaps, which is very weird, we're going to remember to get our tile inspector here and swap this one more time. And test. Watch this go around again. Let's also set this into close. Huh. 
that's what's happened. When the rat exploded before, it exploded underneath. So you can have this setting um, with um, some of the plugins where um, when a ride crashes, it actually discolors the ground, as you can see right here, and it also destroys some of the tracks. So that's what happened there. I just didn't notice it. Um, maybe not the best um, piece to have or plugin to have while you're trying to do tests like this, um, because it's going to be very easy to kind of screw up that whole thing. Uh, but nonetheless, here we are. Grab our number five again. We're going to become old hats at this very soon. Probably already there. You'll be able to do it in your sleep. Okay, we're going to back this one up by one. We're going to take number six and we're going to move him forwards. The right spot. Go. And then we're going to remember to take our tile inspector here and swap that track right back. All right, so now, hopefully third time lucky, we are going to be able to run this ride. There we go, smooth sail on through that section. Backwards up the spike, and now we'll get that nice boost. Almost up and over. So what we can always do here is adjust one of these to um, whatever it wants to be. And generally what you want to do is adjust one of the backs, uh, the ones on the spike, because uh, you don't want to accidentally send it over the first time uh, with that. So we'll go ahead and take uh, this 54, and we'll up it to 62. Should not be a problem. And the track length hasn't changed, so we can go ahead and kind of do that no matter where we want to go. Um, so we can change that kind of on the fly, and it really is going to affect our overall uh, design. So just little adjustments here and there, make sure that we get what we want. Now we're going to go around, and we're going to see where this one stops. As a longer layout, you'll find yourself becoming very used to using the uh, speed up and slow down buttons. Um, there we go. Let's slow down on those brakes. Now it's going to park. Okay, so what you'll notice here is that we are a little ways out from where we were, which means that I've done something wrong. So, one, two, three, four. I think, wrong right here. So it looks like we're about two out from where we are. Means that it's probably this guy. What I'm gonna do is go back through here, make an adjustment where we move one less up here. It did seem to me like the uh, we were hitting the brakes a little bit late compared to where I wanted it to. Let's change the steel wild mouse back to mini golf. Let's put our whole A back in here. Change it back to steel wild mouse. Okay. So the nice thing is we don't necessarily have to reset this in full. We can just take our edit ride vehicles we can go grab our uh, car number five here and let's just push him back up to where it needs to go really we're essentially doing a manual reset here okay so we got that single pixel again and we are good for launch so let's go ahead and try them again let's see if adjusting those two sections there at the back really did anything for us What we can do too is speed up our movement here. There it is. That has fixed us, uh, changing that launch speed. 
All right. Still moving very well. All right, let's slow it down now that we're coming to the close. All right, that looks a little bit better as far as that goes. Now, your bottom car is going to whip around pretty good, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Let's see if we're parking in the right spot this time. Yep, sure enough, we got one pixel of red right there, which means that it's parking in the right spot. It means that we're in good shape for you know, the overall design here. But you'll notice we're only running one train right now. So we need to run two trains. We need to make sure that we get the blocks right. So what we need to do is shift ourselves to a second train. And we're going to go ahead and test this. And I'm going to put a pause here real quick. Actually, it moved ever so slightly. So let's test and pause real quick. Okay. So part one. Like we've always done here, we're going to swap this track. We're going to take our edit ride vehicles here. We're going to be on train one, vehicle five. We're going to get the 10 times. Going to back this bad boy up down the hill. Forward. And since we know exactly where it's going to sit, it really doesn't matter where it sits on here anymore. It's just kind of how, how it hits. We know that the track length is right. So it really doesn't matter at this point. So we're just going to park him a little bit forward. Um, and actually, that means that the brakes are going to start a little sooner. So that's totally fine. It really doesn't matter at this point. It's not an exact science by any means. Okay. And then we're going to take our front guy here and move it just ever so slightly. And now, so we don't crash, we're going to swap back this tile right there at the end of the station. Right out the back of the station. And we're going to unpause. So, now our ride is shut, and we have the right guy down there, so we're going to put him in test. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and close. So then this guy's going to come up and park while train one's doing its thing. All right, now we're going to pause this. And pop our track back once more. Get our edit ride vehicles. And now we're going to take train two, train two, vehicle five. Track progress. Do it. And we're going to put this one up forward. Same spot as the other one. Doesn't have to be exactly, exactly, exactly the same spot, but you want it to be as close as it can be. Okay. We have frozen our. Uh, we have frozen our train six here, car six. Pop this back here. We go. Accidentally got him stuck on the wild mouse. We couldn't get him back, so we did go ahead and swap back our um, track there. As long as you're paying attention to that, more accurately drop that in. Okay. So now that we have moved the second train back there and we have properly moved back uh, this track so it's not going to crash, we can unpause this and uh, watch and learn as it's continuing along. There's our rollback. Get our triple launch in here. Our triple launch, a bit of a misnomer considering that it doesn't actually launch backwards on that section. You can do a shoestring that will do that, but it's uh, maybe not quite worth the effort for me right now. This one works just fine. So train two is going to continue to sit there. Let's make sure we're still, let's put this guy in test. So he is going to sit there ready to go. And he's not going to go until this one clears the block in front, which is what we want. Put this in block breaks. And that block, as remember I said, is the uh, chain lift right there at the end. And now that that's clear, he's on his way. If it weren't for that chain lift, whatever block that I would put further down it would be the one that it would clear. Because right now there was only two blocks. There's the station and the block break that sits behind. Uh, so this one acts as a third block, and you always need one uh, more block than there are trains. So now we have the other train doing its thing while train one has parked. 
and this serves for any number of trains. So if you had three trains, you'd do the same thing. You just have to adjust all three of them. There's really no difference to the whole thing. This one's going to go around, and it will hit our uh, lift hill piece there. Sort of our little dummy cheat uh, to clear the, the block, which um, uh, kind of simulates more of a block break on the diagonal there, which is, in my opinion, okay. If you don't like it, then it's an easy thing to adjust out. But there we go, cleared up, and we are off and rolling. So, the only kind of cleanup bits that I would have here is let's take our um, steel wild mouse track, let's just make it invisible here. Here, not that one, and here. That's really the only thing now that it's all invisible, and then you can easily come back through here and repaint all these to match the rest of your ride. And there you have it. The key parts to remember for this is you need to make sure the track below matches the length of the track above, and that's a trial and error process. Uh, but you know, as you get uh, doing more of these, you'll kind of get that general feel of getting it sort of close to start with, and then each time you'll get it a little bit closer. So I think this one ended up taking me, you know, maybe six or seven tries in the the outset when I first made this ride. Um, you know, it's just a matter of taking the time to do it and do it right. Um, which not always the most fun, but uh, the end result is pretty darn cool once you get there. Um, and then uh, the key thing to remember is wherever you want the brakes on your above track, whenever that train gets to that location above, then you'll want to pause the game, mark that track below, let the train pass, and then go through and add in those brakes um, just to make sure that you do it at the right spot. Simultaneously, uh, this is also how you would do a launch. So if you wanted to, for example, launch this ride, you could put a fast chain lift, you could put LSM down below and launch this on a uh, diagonal, for example. You could launch it on a vertical. Uh, you could do all sorts of different things like that. Um, typically, that's less used than the brake run um, because there's other ways to do that. But um, this is a good option for you as far as that goes. But anyway, that really does it for our tutorial today. A little bit longer, a little bit more complicated perhaps, but hopefully you got something out of it and you can try this on your own rides. If you have any questions, always feel free to post and I will do my best to help you solve it if you have any troubles. Uh, if you have any things that you'd like to see in the future, other hack tutorials, uh, feel free to let me know. I've got a couple of them lined up, but I uh, always like to hear what you're looking to see. Uh, and I will post and download to this park here uh, within the next couple of tutorials. I know I've been posting one every couple of uh, couple of videos here moving forward, but it's been a little while since we've done this. And I'm pretty happy with how this park is turning out, just because it's kind of fun to see the the whole thing. And actually, if you you know have a sharp eye here, you can actually see some of the test stuff that we're working on right now. But only a peek. So. That's all for today. Um, until next time, thank you all very much for watching, and uh, enjoy your hacking. See you next time.